In this session, we'll show you how Agile process guidance lets you respond to rapidly changing business needs. We're going to help you learn how processes change dynamic CRM from data capture to outcome driven and how to build and configure processes to meet flexible business needs. So when we talk about business processes, it's really, it's a recipe. It tells you step by step what you need to do to get to a measurable, verifiable outcome. It serves as a roadmap. It tells you where you are in the process flow. I get to see everywhere that I'm at and I know exactly where I am so I can really work effectively. So when we talk about using processes, there's a couple things we want to hit on. I can track progress in a business process. Again, it's visual. I see a roadmap of where I want to go. I can see each stage. I can see what's completed, what's not completed, and then what comes next. I have the ability to switch a business process. I can click on, in this particular case, a cross-sell and say, switch my process, streamline it for this cross-sell deal. I don't need to go through the full qualify and discover stage. And their process-centric experiences allow me to, again, navigate to other entity records via the process. It's now no longer about working the lead, working the account, working the opportunity, working the quote. It's about working the deal. It's one screen. Work the process. Open this particular lead, Alan Brewer. Qualify him to close. In doing so, I'm going to span the lead, the opportunity, the quote, and then close the opportunity. A bunch of different entities under the scenes, but really one experience in one screen, no pop-ups, guiding users through that as I progress the stages and move into the different elements of the entity. So moving from the lead, qualifying to the opportunity, I'm simply moving to the next bar and changing the fields on the form, keeping users focused on where they are and what they need to do. These processes are configurable through a very easy declarative tool. We can open up this designer, we can specify the entities that this process uh, exists for. In this particular screenshot, you'll see that this cross-sell process takes a lead and then moves to the opportunity and it's done. I can add multiple entities to this flow. Each entity has its stages. In this case, we have propose and close and steps within the stage. You'll see identify the sales team, proposal status, etc. So we can define these. Again, there can be multiple processes per entity. So I might have a bunch of different qualification processes for the lead. I might have a bunch of different opportunity sales processes based on the type of product. Maybe we sell products. Maybe we sell services. We can't snap to one standard process. We have, as I mentioned, stage gating. So the ability to tick the box on the right for specific fields to be required, preventing users from moving to the next step or the next stage until those are completed. And lastly, as I mentioned previously, these processes are role-based. So I can tailor sales-related processes, assign them to my sales roles, and as my sales users log into the system, they're presented with those. At the same time, my customer service reps or my marketing uh, representatives will not see those processes. They'll get role-specific processes for their use. So let's see a demonstration. In this demonstration, I'm going to start by opening up a lead. So you'll see here I'm going to use the most recently used items to open up Alan Brewer, who is a record that I am uh, doing a lot of work with right now. So processes, again, visually define where I am on this particular deal. I can see that right here with a nice blue flag that I'm sitting in the qualify stage. Within the qualify stage, there's these specific actions or steps that I need to take around matching to a contact, matching to an existing account, uh, defining the purchase timeline. These aren't just text fields. We can bring in drop-down values so users can quickly capture the data that's necessary. We can also track, as you can see, the check marks here of where the user is in terms of completing what they need to do in this particular process. I can always see, even though I'm currently working the qualify stage, I can see what I need to do next by clicking each additional step and, or I'm sorry, each additional stage and seeing the steps that are available within those steps 
so stages so I can prepare my work here. So again, I'm in this qualify stage, but one thing to note here is that, you know what, I've done work with Allen in the past. I don't necessarily need to use my canned uh, or my standard out of the box lead to opportunity process. I need a more streamlined process for this particular record. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to switch processes and specify my cross-sell process. So this gives users that ability to have processes available to them to meet their needs, to tailor experiences, to take users through what they need to do to complete specific actions. Again, it's all around some form of a verifiable outcome. So here within this lead, very streamlined process. I only have three stages. One simple step to confirm interest and move this deal forward. So I'm just simply going to tick that and hit qualify this deal to move forward. Qualifying it is going to create that opportunity and transition me from the qualify to the proposed stage. So what you notice here within the one form that we're looking at here, I can see that I am in this particular opportunity now. I have some actions that I need to take within this stage, but I also have all of the fields on this form are opportunity specific fields. So as I click back to qualify, you'll see here I am in the lead. I have all of the data for the lead. I have the interactions, the social collaboration with Yammer, activities, notes, etc. Everything we were doing as we were working this lead. But as I move to that proposed stage, I'm now in the opportunity. My interactions, my activities, all of my data points are now just around closing this particular deal and capturing the data that makes sense uh, for this particular opportunity now. So users need these experiences to help guide them through what they need to do, but also to have that flexibility to define what is needed for their particular process. Salespeople know best what they need to do. The organization needs to define some policies and deliver those processes, but giving users that flexibility will ultimately drive that adoption to help them do what they need to do, which in this particular case is closed business. So because we need flexibility in these processes, we've added a very simple process editor. So I can click on edit the process and you'll see here the designer experience for that process that we've just been going through. So this cross-sell process is a real simple process. It has two entities, the lead and the opportunity. And within the lead entity, I have one stage, which we called qualify. It is tied to a category of qualify for reporting, so I can see these deals within a, a funnel type report. And we can also add steps within the stage. We have one step to confirm interest. I can also add another step. As I click on opportunity, we're going to see the two additional stages we have for the opportunity entity within this process flow. Propose stage, again tied to a category, and the steps within that process, whether or not they're required, etc. I can also continue to grow this process to maybe span the quote, order, invoice, entities, any of the related entities to this originating entity. So I have the opportunity so I can add any related entity like in this case I'll pick quote and this gives us a new stage now for quotes and I can specify a field. These are quote related fields. And lastly processes uh, are again about a verifiable outcome so th since this process is specific to a deal I can close this process by going back to one of the originating entities and adding in some final data. So as I start with the lead, I go to the opportunity, I generate the quote, then maybe I'm back to the opportunity to enter some simple data to close out and win this deal. So giving organizations power to define these processes to meet their business needs. Processes are very similar to our forms in CRM. We have multiple forms and we define a form order so that we can allow users to see a default but then select from others. I can define an order to processes. So for every opportunity I create, our standard process is going to be the lead to opportunity sales process. But then I have a, uh, the ability to switch to any of these other processes. So you can define the order for these particular processes. And lastly, the process can be uh, defined to a specific set of security roles. 
I can enable it for everyone, or I can enable it for only specific set here. Maybe I only want my salespeople access to this cross-sell process, which would make sense in a lot of organizations. So I hope you enjoyed this session. Hope you can really see the amazing work that has gone behind these process capabilities in Microsoft Dynamics CRM 2013, and how we're really rethinking CRM systems and how users interact.